Hello there, welcome to Strum. On the show today we have the very fine singer-songwriter Mr. Osmo Yuna, one of the originators and prime movers in our local underground scene, be it in solo folk singer-songwriter mode or even in rock band mode, either with his very fine band of cigarettes in tow or adding shouty prose and strummy mandolin for Ben's bitches and the Maharaja Commission, respectively. Hello there, Asmin. Welcome hey, to the show, nice mate. Nice to meet you, man. What Great to have you on. <laughs> okay, you're one of the hardest working musicians in town, mate. Every time I open a magazine, it's always a poster for your gig. You're always working now. Tell me about some of the stuff you got going on for 2014. I've got, I've got, a, I've got an EP, a split EP plan mm -hmm. um, with uh, this Singaporean singer-songwriter friend of mine called Hell Low, H-E-L-L. L O W. Hello. Hello. <laughs> yeah, so, lovely stuff. So, yeah, we're gonna do a split together mm -hmm. because I've been going in and out of Singapore the last two years, and yeah. it's quite interesting. There's there's acoustic single coming up there, and also I'm recording a full length CD with um, with the cigarettes. It's Fantastic called Was Was, stuff. and um, my friend and bandmate Raji is gonna produce it. Mm -hmm. and we're gonna do his stuff together. So yeah, I think I got it. Mapped out for the year. Wow, yeah. busy as <laughs> busy, So Was Was <laughs> with the cigarettes is that gonna be? Full on Osmo Yuna with a rock band? Um, yeah. Yeah. So, a full band. Um, we'll see what works, what doesn't okay. work. Um, I'm, I'm, usually, I go in, go in without. I don't have concrete ideas when I record. I like, I like to take care as it comes, see what, what, oh. what the ambience or the aura of the space brings, you know? So Fantastic. Kind of fun. Organic is the yeah. way for you, yeah. Osmo. Well, you know, the first time I discovered you was your EP Tenets, which Tenets, I really yeah. love. You know, I'm a Palace Brothers mm -hmm. kind of guy, and that kind of really reminded me of all the old country stuff that I love. Now, your other EP, I understand, is in that vein. Am I yes, right? Yes, yes. Um, I'm working with Ronnie again, Ronnie from Furniture. So right. he did Tenets. Mm -hmm. So and uh, it'll be nine years, man, Tenets, since yeah. it came out. So yeah, we, we consciously said, hey, let's I wanna let's go back to the spirit of Tenets. I'm mm -hmm. not gonna. I mean, you, you can't replicate that. I mean, that's who you were back then. Right. But I think the same kind of like. Um, Abandoned to record. We just go in, one two takes. What works, what doesn't, do it done. That's how we I approach that. So. so we're going through that. Yeah. Okay, great stuff. Well, I'm definitely looking forward to that. Now you're you're on strum, and of course this show centers around the beauty of the acoustic guitar. Mm -hmm. Now you're one dude who likes both sides of the coin, right? You like to yell and do your punk rock thing, <laughs> but you also like to get intimate with your acoustic guitar. Now, I want to start off with you maybe telling me about your relationship. The relationship that you have with your guitar now mm. what's that like um well sometimes to me a guitar is just a tool mm -hmm. and to, to write songs sometimes it's it's your it's your companion on stage <laughs> when you're alone right mm. and sometimes it's also something you just want to ride like a horse yeah you know and that's the electric yeah so it's hard um i, I see the guitar as as both a i mean it, as a symbol it's quite iconic you know the 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 guitar slinger. Mm -hmm. you know, sure, that's cultural, but also yeah. at the same time, it's very practical. You can move around. I learned piano as a kid, and you can't run. You can't find a nice view to write a song with a piano. Mm -hmm. You can push a piano around. Whereas a guitar, you can move around. You know. And my first guitar was a was a classical that was meant for nylon string, um, but I put metal strings on it. Mm -hmm. And that's when I started busking and the bridge almost came off, so there's a lot of tape on it. <laughs> I, think, I think I saw you play that guitar <laughs> yeah, in the yeah, early yeah. days, right? Yes, yes. Really battered all like yeah. a nylon string yeah. with steel on it. What, what <laughs> fantastic stuff. What, what asked me, you know, obviously you like your electric stuff, but also you like your acoustic stuff. Mm. I'm going to put you on the spot, mate. Acoustic mm. or electric? Well, that's a tough one. Mm. Mm. You know, my, my first real guitar was acoustic. My telly, well, we've gone through a lot. I'll still stick with acoustic because mm -hmm. you don't need electricity. Yeah. You, know, you can play through a blackout, mm -hmm. you can carry that around, you know, right. you don't need pedals. Yeah. But if you want the extra X factor, the electric would go. But yeah. if you, you put me on an island, mm -hmm. Definitely acoustic. <laughs> okay, fantastic. I like the blackout scenario because when it all shuts down, you know, oh, yes. you can spot the DJ. He's the guy that's being really quiet because yeah. he has no power, you know. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, fantastic. Mate, you've got really eclectic music taste, which mm -hmm. is reflected in the different kind of bands that you play in. I want to know a bit about your, your musical inspirations, mate. Ah, okay. Whew. Um, well, uh, I think you could start off when growing up. I listened to a lot of my, my, my dad, um, when we used to Balik Kampung, used to listen to a lot of Pop Ye Ye songs. Mm -hmm. Also some Kenny Rogers, 
um, some country. Wow. So early on, there was there, there was a pop sensibility, there was mm. a country. Then I remember going through his LPs or the Beatles, you know, the blue and red album. Yes. One, they shot every, every household <laughs> yeah. has one, right? <laughs> one, them like beard. I said, like, wow, what yeah. kind of band is this? Yeah. So I think that's how it began. So, but I've always loved that. I always, always love melody. Mm -hmm. That's very important to me. Mm -hmm. So later on, I got into bands like REM. And if you grew up 90s, definitely you got your the Brit stuff and the Nirvana, mm -hmm. you know, all those stuff. So it was a nice period to grow up in. 90s. And has all these influences seeped in the music that you're making currently? Uh, uh, yeah, I guess so. Sonically, but also I think one thing that, that I think what the alternative or indie rock of the 90s, 80s thought mm -hmm. was that. Look, it doesn't have to be this complicated. <laughs> you mm. can, uh, you can. You only need is three, four chords, and that's how I discovered punk backwards. I yeah. found REM, then found REM. In the early days, they covered Sex Pistols, and who was these guys? Mm. Well, listen, Sex Pistols. Then from that, you start the trace. I think mm. if you, you genuine love for music, the trace, the, the lineage will go backwards. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, if, if you if you're going backwards on on your lineage, it goes all the way back to the, the focus, really. You oh, know, yes, your Woody yes. Guthrie yes. and your. Your Pete Seegers, I mean, they're the yeah. original punks, really, yeah. if you think about it, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, a couple more questions before we get you to perform some songs mm. for us. Now, what really interests me is that, you know, you're a bit of like a Spider-Man type of character. You've got mm. a dual persona. <laughs> you're a rock star. And also, you know, you, you, you're a lecturer as well. Yeah, yeah. Now, do you get kids coming up to you in your lectures going, mate, I saw you play in the... Like, does that ever happen uh, to you, mate? Sometimes the opposite. Um, they're shocked to see me when I play because they probably see me in uni and yeah. I'm teaching. Mm -hmm. When they come to the show, they see me like rolling around, jumping, shouting, <laughs> and, right, yeah. and they yeah. come back a bit shocked. It's yeah. Like, yeah, that's the performing arts, I tell you. you know? wow. yeah, don't judge your. The coolest yeah. lecturer in <laughs> yeah. town, right? <laughs> well, I ask you this because you know, our show is also about you know, promoting music, mm -hmm. and I want kids to get into it. You know, perhaps they watch a show and want to buy acoustic guitar. Mm -hmm. So for anyone that wants to sort of follow in your footsteps and get into the whole songwriting, acoustic guitar playing side of things, what's the kind of advice you would uh, give to them? Ah, well, for me, if you're starting off just writing songs, I think you don't need a too expensive guitar. Mm -hmm. um, but something that works. Mm -hmm. you know, between, I mean, a couple would do. Mm -hmm. But of course, you want something that lasts for a while, mm -hmm. you know? So, if you can save up, mm. why not get a, something that is a bit sturdy, mm. you know? Mm. Um, but don't worry about how it's going to sound. I would say stick to the craft. Mm -hmm. Songwriting. Yeah. Because that doesn't cost a thing. Yeah. That's right? the most important <laughs> yes. thing, right? I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's practice makes perfect, really, yes, when it yes, comes to this, yes. right? Yep. Well, I'll tell you what, Asmil, you know, we've got lots to talk about, but mm. only very little time. So for anyone that wants to find out more information about you, is there somewhere we can go? Oh, okay, just go to azmailyouknow.com hmm? or on Facebook, look for me, Azmail, you know, A Z M Y L Y U N O R. Fantastic. Or just Google stuff. me. Fantastic stuff. Well, <laughs> here's Azmail Yuno know, to take us away with one of his new tunes, a song called Mary Mott. Ke bebalangki 
Do. Mm-hmm.